Hi, my name's Jan Hogarth. I'm a renovation specialist architect in Brisbane, and today I'm going to have a bit of a rant. I've been in this game for 30 years, and these are seven things that are constants in my life. They give me work, which I like, but they're seven faults in any design. Old houses, new houses, it's just a mistake. So if you're thinking of renovating, don't, or building, don't do any of these. Number one, not raising the house high enough. Here we are, classic Queenslander. That height there complies. It's 2.1 metres. You can enclose a room there. It's not enough. If you put a ceiling in, and a floor in, you're that much out. It doesn't comply anymore. And not only that, there's not enough room to fit the, the traps for the plumbing, let alone air conditioning. If you're gonna go raise your house, make sure that you get a 2.7 metre high ceiling straight underneath all the structure so that you have a sense of space. 2.7 metres doesn't cost you much more than 2.4. There is a sweet spot for rays, which is about 3.24 metres because that is 18 stair rises at 18 centimetres each. And then you can put a straight flight of stairs in if you want to. If you do do that, you get this nice sense of space and flow through the house and it all kind of ties together. My pet hate walking in your front door straight into your living room. I've got three kids. I know what it's like. You open the door, two of your kids are killing each other, the dog runs out and tries and trips you over, there's nowhere to put anything. You're kicking the shoes and parcels out of the way. You spend your whole life apologising for the craziness of your home. Do not do this. What you should do is create a kind of staggered entry into your house, like there's a little porch, there's a little entry, so at least you can ease your way into the home. A bit like this, you know, there's a place to sit. You can come up, you kind of lead your way into the house. The house is up here, but there's, it just feels more civilised. And there's whole continents where people take off their shoes before they come into the house, this is a great idea. Toilet at the end of a corridor. Not so much in Queenslanders, but in 70s houses. You've seen it, you know, you're trying to blank it out right now, I know. Okay, if you have to have a hallway with a bathroom at the end, at least turn the toilet 90 degrees so you can't actually see the pan. Just if you get a plan like that and you're thinking of building and that's details in it, doesn't matter if you shut the door, it's just bad, send it back. Do you want to live in a rabbit warren like this? Now the problem with this is there's no light at the end of the tunnel. Both of these places are roughly the same, but this one you've got a kind of direction that you can go down to. What happens is people see the light at the end of the tunnel and they kind of draw, go through to it. This one there's light at the back, you can see the light in here, but the, the walls are kind of not matching up so that it makes the place feel smaller than it actually is. So when you're doing a set of plans or you're looking at it, you do the walkthrough to make sure that the spaces all kind of align. It gives you much better uh, flow that's really what flow is. It's the sense that the places connect and it's because your eyes can see through from one space to the distance. So just being able to see greenery at the back makes a place feel bigger. What is a hidden asset of your property is its aspect. So in Brisbane, northeast is just your primo valuable aspect. It gets a cool breeze in summer and it's warm in winter. You get the winter sun in there. So it's like a free asset that you get with your land. Now, do not throw this away with a bathroom. This window can't be opened anyway. You're never going to get any cross flow ventilation from it. And what does it matter if it's uh, warm in winter and uh, cool in summer because it's a bathroom it's just a complete waste if you've got so don't do that just don't put 
quality spaces in your northeast corner. Doesn't matter where it is on your block, you adjust to capture that aspect. So you use your northeast corner for quality rooms, your master bedroom, your living room, your outdoor living area that you use all the time so that you're really capturing that secret value of your house. Don't put the bathroom there or the laundry there. Classic in Queenslanders. Kitchen on the southwest corner. Like the northeast corner is the best corner, the southwest corner is the worst corner. It's hot in summer. It gets awful afternoon sun. It's cold in winter with westerlies. Ugh, horrible. Back in the day, they put the kitchen there because it's just a kitchen and little ladies out the back there. She's going to be hot with the stove anyway. And they put it in the back and use the kitchen as a buffer. No, now we like the kitchen to all be open to the house. We don't work away and bring plates into the dining room. We integrate the kitchen in through that. You've still got to put something in the southwest corner, so use that for your garage, your storage. Put the laundry in there, places that don't move. Oh, maybe you have one kid that you don't like, put them in that room. Um, so what we're aiming for is something like this. This is not a huge kitchen, but it does open onto these spaces. So it's just, it's just small, but does the job. It's connecting, uh, connecting into the, the breeze and the, the rest of the house. Okay, my last point is storage. Think about your types of storage, how often you use them, and allocate space for it, especially in a carport where you've got your bikes and things like that, your mudroom where you're arriving and you've got backpacks and shoes, then also your medium term storage, things like Christmas trees and bulk buying. It would be better to keep the floor area the same, shrink the rooms up slightly and create a storeroom that takes a lot of this stuff, takes the pressure off the home. It's just a much better value, value add. The rooms that get a bit smaller, they can be designed to have light and windows and flow with just a better clever design. Here's an example of one that we've got storage in all of these back rooms which allows the living rooms to have more sense of space. So that's seven things I hate about bad design. Just don't do those errors. If you're struggling with any of this, just get in touch with us. Placemate Architects.